Hello, musicians. Welcome to the summer school. Very excited. Uh, Suzuki dot school. If you want to go to the website, Lo lots and lots of free stuff on the website. But um, the lessons are pay per view, and they're only a pound. So that's pretty good, isn't it? So what we're doing with this project is we're working through famous music favorites. Things by Ed Sheeran, things by Vivaldi, um, things by Coldplay, th uh, rock songs, things by Bach. We're really mixing all of these popular um, classical songs and popular music, um, you know, culturally type pop music. Um, and we're mixing them all up into a big wonderful bag of performance and practice all through the summer. So the first one we're doing is Vivaldi, the Four Seasons, Winter, that's the number two, um, Largo. And I've chosen this one because actually it's not too difficult. It's not too fast. Now, if you want to play by ear, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to read the music because the way we're teaching, we're going to be listening, 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 listening. And if you can follow the music, because I'm using Tom Play, you'll be able to follow the line as it goes along if you want to read the music. But alternatively, we do about three lines a day and we'll hopefully get through a piece a week. Um, so it depends. I mean, if, there, if it's a very long piece, we might cut it down a bit. Um, but it'll certainly start you off and we'll play through the whole thing so you'll be able to see the music and you'll be able to you know pop in and have a look whenever you need it that's really good and you don't have to buy tom play the app it's quite expensive but you don't have to buy it you can buy the the sheet music i mean if you're a, a reading musician you are advised to get the actual sheet music sheet mu music is you know or a digital copy um it's usually cheaper actually the digital copies but it's always good to have it um after you know once you've finished playing a piece because it's part of your repertoire you know so it's something that you've always got um so yeah we're looking at the largo so so i'll just um go over some important ish things that i've found now there's a lot of shifting and you're going to be making compromises between shifting and string swapping. You don't want you want to go the easiest route. Now, um, a disclaimer, actually, I've got very tiny hands, really small. Um, so I do a lot of shifts. I find shifts are easier for me to do than um, a big string swap with a shift. Do you see what I mean? So I, I look around and I go for the easy the easiest option for my small hands. Now, if you've got bigger hands, you you may be able to do it a different way. So the fingering that I'm going to put in today during today's lesson for page one, the first three, um, it's up to um, 60, about bar 16, that first little section. Um, the fingering is advisable. It's not gospel and you can actually i looked at uh, at this and you can actually do this all in first and second position pretty much um i pretty sure i go down to um f further positions than that but we'll we'll find that out in the lesson when i'm actually talking to you with the music playing in front of me it's much easier when i'm when i've got the cello in front of me um so if you want if you've only done first position and second position and fourth position sorry um if that's all you've done you can actually get away with just doing those positions but if you're playing by ear you don't have to worry about things like positions you can just sort of fly around the cello i assume i mean it depends how you've learned and people learn in different ways so i think you'll you'll be able to do it also there's there are quite a lot of sections that you could do all on the one string and that's really useful for people who play by ear it makes things a bit easier for them they can go lots of whoops and swoops and glides so it's really really good for that this is uh, uh, the slow the slow um section of of that of Vivaldi's seasons so you know it's it's actually in in those terms it's it's not the most difficult piece um what else did I notice? It's quiet. 
starts off quietly, right? So you can use a, a few harmonics. So I found myself choosing to use some harmonic D. So we'll be going over that in class today. I'll explain to you about the usefulness of them when you're flying around the fingerboard. Um, and how lovely they are. They sound very beautiful. When you're playing a quiet piece, they can be actually, um, they can add to it. They can add a certain ambience to to the performance. And um, there are some little crescendos. Um, we'll talk about those. Now, there are a couple of um, accidentals, which changes key, basically. Um, and we, we sharpen the C, so we move into D major. Now, if you're doing the Suzuki method, on its own, or if you've done the Suzuki method on its own, which is quite rare, actually. Most people start with Suzuki and move on to um, a, a more advanced way of playing. Suzuki is very good for children um, and very good for adults who are beginning. But, you know, to enhance your repertoire, you need to really explore I would suggest some other methods. And that's why we at the Suzuki School, we start off, we all, always start off with Suzuki. Um, but by the time we get to, you know, book two, we're starting to branch out a bit and we're starting to look at um, something with a more encompassing repertoire and something that doesn't rely on finger placements and re repetition. Um, adults are not so keen on repetition as children and they can get quite bored quite easily. So really, you know, the summer school is directed towards... Um, older, uh, you know, not seven-year-olds, more like, well, 14 and up, I would say, 14 to 90, shall we say, something like that. And um, that's not to say if you're 12 and you're a brilliant cellist or violist or pianist, you can't come and join in. That's That would be ridiculous. You can. We'll be doing some composing lessons as well. Um, I'll be talking about Logic Pro and how to record yourself and how to um, you know, the, some of the rules of composition that we need to break when we're exciting musicians. The rules are meant to be broken. Never assume that you have to stick to them. But they're guidelines for, for making pretty pretty songs, reliable songs that um, are, are a bit predictable but unoffensive. OK, so we will be doing that. Um, so today we're going to be doing these uh, 6, 15 or 16, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah, 16 bars, I think. I haven't got my specs on, so I'm sort of a bit blind here. <laughs> it's about 16 bars, three lines, and um, we'll be doing it at a very slow tempo, about 53. Um, the, as we progress through the week, we will speed up the tempo um, and there'll be a backing track. Um, a cello and piano backing track for you to um, play. Um, I might actually find an orchestral version as well um, and you'll be able to um, pop that on and you'll just be able to follow it um, at your leisure. So the classes will be available at uh, on the website suzuki.school and also on Lounges TV. TV. We've got a Lounges TV platform and you can pop over there and you'll be able to buy individual classes. Okay. Um, also today we'll be looking at the viola. Now I've just started viola. Viola is not my first instrument, but I'm going to be doing some summer school stuff with it anyway, because I can. Um, once you play one string instrument, the others will happen very quickly. You know, you won't have to, you can already read music. You already have very nimble fingers. You already play in tune. And um, those are the things that, you know, take about three years minimum to develop. And I've been a musician all my life. So, it, you know, these things are not um, as difficult as if I was, a, I'd never come across any stringed instrument before in my life or indeed any any instrument. Um, I mean, started playing piano when I was seven. So it's, you know, it, it's in my bones, it's in my blood. Um, but think of me as a practice buddy. Um, with a viola. Um, I do, however, I have done a course and I've been doing some classes so I know how to hold it and things like that. Um, and I can pass on all of that lovely knowledge to you guys. Very important. Passing on the knowledge, that's that's something you don't always get that on 
YouTube. You do sometimes, but it's difficult to ask questions, isn't it? But you can ask me questions over on the website. You can drop, you can sign up for free and you can send me messages if needed or required. And also, I think you can message me on Lounges TV. I'm not sure. It's all linked anyway. It's all linked up to the website. So, Antonio Vivaldi, we are welcome. We are welcoming him into the fold this morning, a bit later on. Um, it does take me a while to edit the videos because I use a GoPro. So, But the video will should be up this afternoon. So I'm really excited about that, really looking forward to it. Oh, hello, Romeo's come to join me. Romeo absolutely adores um, winter, uh, uh, Vivaldi's winter. Absolutely loves it, don't you, darling? Yes, you do. Right, I suppose I better go and uh, have my coffee etc have a great morning guys and i'll catch you later over at suzuki.school